I'd like to introduce you to my cameraman today. I just made this guy. Uh, quick and dirty, I wanted to get this video out of the way to have something to start with. It's always easier to maintain a project once it begins. Scrap piece of wood, four cutoffs, and some stands, old piece of plywood. It's good enough, it'll break down, the camera rests in this little cradle and I can space it with some wooden blocks and spacers however I want. It allows me to at least rest it, the camera on the stand on the middle bench so that you can get a fair sense of my uh, location in the shop. The camera did not move much during this particular video. Hello there, welcome to my shop. I've had a number of requests for a tour of sorts and to summarize, I'm a turner, so my specialty is using a lathe. Recently, I made my shelf here out of white pine. It is five and a half inches deep, 18 inches tall, and 44 inches wide. Nine, nine, three, and three. Gives me lots of space for my individual containers, my sandpaper, individual tools, finishes, and my jars on top with a variety of finishing oils. My lathe is a King Canada 10 by 16. It has a one half horsepower motor, it is um, 120 volts AC. It suits my purposes enough for now. All the fittings are Morris Taper Type 2, and there's a fair bit of slop in the tailstock. I don't like that very much at all, but I'm hopefully going to replace that soon. While at the lathe station, I've got my bench that I made um, out of scrap material. They're all half lap joints and five layers of 3 8 inch ply that I have for my top. It's nice and sturdy. All the joints are glued and screwed. I intend to put some L brackets on the base to um, secure it to the floor better when I'm happy with the actual organization. I hopefully may change this soon, I don't know. And this is my inlet for my dust collector. I've got a 1200 cubic foot per minute King Canada dust collector. It came as a single stage with a felt bag. I have since upgraded the filter to a canister and involved an inline vein baffle. And I'll show you that shortly and later on in the video. But having the dust collector here as a rigid port is very convenient. Um, it draws all of the dust when I'm doing antler, which is the majority of the work that I do. Any dust I do from uh, sanding, rough, fine, wet, or dry, I can't even smell the wood. It's fantastic. Um, I've actually lost swabs and uh, significant chunks of wood in here to be harvested in the fane baffle. It even swallowed a towel once while I was cleaning the lathe with the dust collector on by accident. Um, this is much better than the previous shelf that I had. I had um, a little tiny one that didn't have nearly enough space. But here I've got area for my gloves, my calipers. I have all my uh, sandpaper from my blue shop towel to 600 all the way down to 60 different grits. And I had individual sheets of letter sized pages individually cut. So it's super quick to do individual tasks for my pens, which is the majority of the work that I do there as well. I have the kits that I have immediately to do and take care of, as well as all of my chucks are on the top shelf. And when I'm doing finishing, I have my individual holsters, little pegs that I put all the, my blanks onto, my barrels, so that the finish can dry without risking laying it on anything. Something else, too, that people have been curious about. All these holes are 5 eighths of an inch, which is just snug at the middle area of Morse 2 taper. And this gives me enough space for my tool rests to fit in comfortably. It's on a 45 degree angle, so all of my pieces individually rest and don't jingle around too much, besides my long tool rest. My live center, my spur drives, all this kind of stuff. I have space for expansion. Very, very convenient when I'm cleaning up my workspace and they're quick to grab, pull it out, put it back in. It's fantastic. And this as well. All of my regular use drill bits for my pens are labeled 7mm, 8mm, 10, 10.5. They're all 
more or less in line for their sizes. This, these are 64 bits, 32, 16, 8, and my metric. Um, works very, very well, very clean, they're out of the way. I can grab them quickly and I know what's missing. It saves precious seconds when I'm doing a batch of 70 or 80 pence. I love this little guy. I was inspired to make this by Tyler's workshop, Tyler G on YouTube. Great guy, recommend it. I learned a lot from his channel. It is a manometer. I have this pipe attached to the top of my filter, my cartridge filter at my dust collector. Just blue food coloring and water so that the more the filter is full, the more dust is contaminating the filter pleats, the less air can escape. So it forces more air down and the more this pushes down, the more it pushes up. I've got five levels from off. When I first installed it, it had never been turned on before. I unhooked it and um, had nothing else going. The shop air was relatively clean. And I marked off the level point. Um, once this is turned on, that level will not increase on a fresh filter. Then I completely bagged it off with a plastic garbage bag, and before the bag exploded, this was a top level. So I level that off, to gradients of 20%, so now I know, based upon what level it reaches, how contaminated the filter is. My particular filter has bats, little squeegees, that you can crank around to break up the dust contamination. So it, once it's up too high, I can bat it around, and it'll drop down a little bit more. But as an example, I'll show you how it works. This steel cabinet is where I store most of my ornament blanks. It has, obviously, full extension drawer slides. This top rack is mostly cherry. This is Newfoundland choke cherry. Came from a, some property that I own on the west coast of the island. Um, these are mostly dry now, but I had them in under cabinet storage um, in milk crates, but they were just getting dusty, contaminated, it was terrible. Though most of the moisture is gone now, they should be able to dry in here in the time it takes me to get around with them. So this is a lot of birch, some apple, uh, some maple by the looks of it, uh, maybe even some plum from my father's property, his orchard. This is mostly rose. A significant portion of this is Newfoundland wild rose. It has fewer petals than the domestic variety. And a lot of these are what we are affectionately calling black spruce butt junk burl. It's the nugget at the base of the tree that uh, we cut green with the chainsaw, I believe, and then later on with a table saw um, into smaller chunks. The green direction in these are erratic, to say the least. I haven't had much success turning them, but I intend to try harder later. Um, I believe this is willow. And there's a lot of pen fodder in these. And more cherry uh, and other varieties down here. I think there's more than one type of cherry, but they were harvested in different types of the year, so it's kind of hard to tell now. And we also have my little bench top sander. It's got a 36 inch belt. Right now there's a 60 grit on there, and the disc is virtually useless. I hate those. Um, this is a TMT brand. It's good enough. The motor's a bit light duty for my taste, but it will suit my purposes sufficiently to, to take the edge off antler or uh, to trim them true if they're only off by a little bit and don't want to deal with the, the um, barrel trimmer. This is also essential, I think, for doing any kind of production work for turning. And this is my mask. I got this off of Amazon or AliExpress or something. It's a full face with P100 filtration, uh, 0.3 micron, I believe, though it could be mistaken. Uh, these are fantastic. I have spares as well. It fits the 3M variety, and I'm very, very happy with this purchase. Rather than wearing a small mask 
and a face shield. This is comfortable. I've been wearing this for 10 hours straight, not taking it off at all for particularly long days, but highly, highly recommend it. About 80 bucks, I think I paid for this Canadian. <clears throat> and while I've got you down here, all the space beneath my benches, you can see on this side and behind me, they're all nearly legless. They're all cantilevered off of the studs and the walls. I only recommend this if you have good strong walls. Some people have two foot or wider centers in a non-load bearing wall with strong sheeting on either side. If there aren't enough supports, this will risk your wall twisting. But underneath my four by eight foot workbench, made entirely of two by fours, um, lots of space, my storage, my thickness planer and other such things. And beneath my wall mounted benches, um, one is nine feet and the other is eight feet, gives me 24 inches of depth and I think 30 inches of height beneath the bench that I intend to later put cabinets. I've been considering putting drawers underneath here, um, putting a divider in the middle, getting full extension drawer slides, but like everything else, that'll happen when it happens. Okay, um, I apologize for the window light washing out my scene. Over here is where I used to have my lathe, so I have all of my individual bins for various parts and tools. When I get into segmenting, bottle caps, plastic water bottles and that sort of stuff are outstanding for doing segmenting uh, individual pieces in amongst the wood blank. I have my various glues, some sandpaper, even um, bulk orders of refills for pens that I order online. They don't fit in my containers. Now, I've seen a variety of solutions when it comes to um, bushing storage and come to orders. So my best solution that I found was these small parts cabinets. I have every single drawer 5, 10, 15, 20, 26 so far, and there's a bunch more down here, so we'll call it 30. Individually labeled with a Penn State Industries serial number on the bottom and a Berea serial number on top when they overlap, but that way it's easy to find them. Um, they label labeled clearly so that I can grab the bin and take it right to my bench. 30 caliber bullet action twist, for example. Um, and I have all my ink refills, I have collars for other tools that I use, grinding discs, uh, fountain pen ink, um, I've got sheet metal squares that I also intend to use for segmenting at some point. Very, very thin silver lines when I get around to doing it, like everything else. I use the Easy Wood tools primarily. I've got a mini rougher and a full size rougher. I do nearly all my work with those. Um, these are some more, for example, that I haven't migrated over to my bins yet. Um, I also have small parts cabinets back over here for screws and nuts and bolts and washers that I use for other tasks. I don't just do woodworking. Um, I don't, don't just do turning. I do some uh, cabinetry type work and making shelves and fixing uh, small parts equipment and tools and that sort of stuff. And I also have more of the same, nuts, bolts, washers and things in these cabinets over here. Now over here we have my blank storage. Um, I order them when the opportunity arises, usually in bulk if I can at all. I've got some boxes on the way and uh, they are inside measurement 6 inches by 6 inches by 12 inches so that I can store a predictable number of blanks in a predictable size box on shelves with regular spacing. Labeled correctly, it should be very, very nice and clean. I also have six by six by six for everyday blanks. I have something on the order of 400 oak. I don't need all those at my hands at regular uh, intervals. So my expectation is that I'll have most of the oak in the, the 12 inch long boxes on a higher shelf, so it's out of the way. 
but I've got something on the order of 2,000 blanks on, on hand right now, um, between pen blanks and ornament blanks. But I've got 300 or more oak, I've got fir, ash, lots of spalted ones that are unlabeled unfortunately, so I'm not exactly sure what they are. Walnut, wangi, lacewood, mulberry, sassafras, jatoba, uh, juniper, cedar, ash, paduke, maple. I've got spectra plywood, um, varieties of maples and walnuts for these. I occasionally make magic wands, which were these before originally. And um, when I make more elaborate ornaments, I have these lovely blanks that a friend sent me from Quebec. This is silver maple, for example. Um, I've got a lot of walnut blanks. And in the case of people who are curious what to reclaim, I discovered recently that Jenga blocks, or any derivation thereof, are phenomenal for doing slim lines. Um, they are regularly sized, you can cut them in half, and they're practically square if you have a thin enough kerf. And uh, the space, if you do it properly, and do it really, really nice and, and square, you can get a full slim line pen from one Jenga block. And you can get these at game stores and, and um, flea markets, craft stores, as knockoffs and that sort of thing very, very easily. Um, this is a significant portion of my blanks. I've got others elsewhere. I'm doing, in the middle of a renovation right now. I don't know where anything is. And where I use my bandsaw quite a bit, I really need to try to keep these cleaner. So that's why I'm getting the boxes in a different part of the shop to keep the uh, dirt and dust off of them. And um, I'm hoping to experiment some more with pipes. Um, ornamental type um, smoking pipes. I've been told that the mesquite flavor of burning wood, depending on the type of wood, adds to the flavor of tobacco or whatever a person wants to use. But, strictly speaking, they're ornamental because I don't want to deal with the liability of telling people they're safe to smoke with, so they won't be. For example, this is potentially a chamber for a smoking pipe. But a lot, I know people who collect them and don't smoke with them, so that's my target market for those. I also have some cut up bits of antler that uh, I'm using for a large order I'm dealing with right now. And I'll show you my um, bandsaw sled that I use primarily for antler, but I can use it for virtually anything. And it's come in very handy. I have some pretty severe lacerations from that particular guy biting me. So any way to keep your fingers farther away from the blade, the better. And here's my main tool wall. It turns out that I don't use most of these, but it's nice to have them off the benches. I would like to build under cabinet storage when I have the time, when I have the ability to budget that much time in my schedule. Um, but right now it serves a purpose. I eventually want to paint all the walls and the ceiling to, in to install better lighting in here, because right now these are just not cutting it. But in the meantime, over here I have some of my kit storage. I order kits in bulk, a lot of them from China, a lot of them from the States. I've got um, bolt action bullet pens, shotgun type pens, uh, mechanical pencils, and keychains. A lot of my antler butts, the actual portion that attaches the skull plate. Um, I have those here for doing snowman ornaments. They're an inch and a half, two inches wide. So this is only pretty handy for doing wider stuff. And I have cutoffs, odds and ends that I might use for segmenting or something later. I'll use these for temporary storage for when I do batching. For example, just to make it even more tedious, I'll cut 75 blanks free from the antler or free from the individual blank, the whole blank, on the bandsaw, and I'll lay them out accordingly. I will then bore 75 on the lathe with my pen chuck and my Jacob's chuck. Then I'll glue them all together, true them with a barrel trimmer and the whole nine yards. But in so doing, it saves precious seconds when you retool every time. And this way, when I do a batch of 70, every one that I destroy, 
I'm able to rebuild and cut a fresh one if I have to on demand, and it keeps me um, from wasting time puttering in the shop when I don't really have to. One project I had recently was a pen stand, and to pretty it up, I had a plunge router, and I made a table for it, a poor man's router table. It worked enough. I hope to buy a table proper when I have the opportunity. But that served the purpose at the time. And uh, down here is my Shapoko 2 CNC machine. I am not too proud to say I'm skilled in a number of areas. Electronics is not one of them. I've been struggling with that for years, literally. And I hope to one day get it working properly, but we'll see how that goes. In the meantime, one of my proudest achievements in this area, aside from my dust collector, is my bandsaw sled. This is my bandsaw sled. Its primary advantage is to allow me predictable, regular cuts, especially when it comes to cutting blanks. I just cut a bunch of antler on this. Um, the best part is, it already has a kerf cut into it, and it has runners on both sides of the table. So up to a certain point it runs perfectly smoothly, but because the edge of the table isn't perfectly um, in line, it's perfectly, I want to say level, but it's off a little bit where the hole, the gap is to run the blade when you change them. So it actually binds up a little bit on the bottom, but that's okay. Most of what I do is only this wide anyway. I can line up the brass barrel, brass tube properly, and with one of my clamps, I can put a positive stop. So I can put whatever I want up against it, cut my blank, and now I know that it is exactly how far I want it to be. I deliberately add a millimeter, millimeter and a half maybe, just enough to admit that, it's, that the wood will remain proud after I bore the, the tube hole for it. That way I'm left with it enough that the brass won't be short every single time. And changing the length is, is very, very quick. I left this uh, piece of plywood wide on purpose so that I have lots of balance on either side when I want to push it through. It gives me a long fence when I want my longer blanks cut. And I have a cutoff from another ornament that I made as the handle. So I can do this one-handed if I have to if I'm holding onto the blank. Antler is very unpleasant to turn. It's usually conical and or curved. So unless you sand it first, which is hard on the entire rack, it's difficult to hold it down with both hands and push properly. So having a solid fence is convenient. I used wood glue and super glue with accelerator to hold this down. It is not screwed in place. And this is just a scrap piece of plywood 3 8 It's good enough. I originally had a six tooth per inch, inch and a half maybe, wide blade on this bandsaw. That was actually what took that chunk out of my finger. Um, I have since traded it out with a 12 TPI quarter inch blade. Works much better, thinner kerf, more predictable cut. The biggest concern is with the antler is that it's often round and when the aggressive teeth hit it, it wants to rotate. So as the blank wants to rotate, it wants to pull your fingers towards the blade, which is what caused that inch long gash that took six weeks to heal. Um, I highly recommend thin kerf, high TPI uh, blade on a bandsaw with the table to make cutting blanks super quick, super easy. I consider this table one of the most valuable items in my shop. Down here is my Thane Baffle. It is an 88 liter garbage can with some downspout pipe into a thin wall PVC fitting. That is a 90 and another 90 beneath it. It continues on the curvature of the bucket. And this top hose is in the middle so that it draws air up the middle while the other circulates air around in, the, in a conventional cyclone fashion for chip separation. Then it continues up here into my main motor housing and my impeller. So I have emptied this bin three times, maybe, 
So you're talking something on the order of 200 liters of space, maybe 150 liters is the equivalent, uh, maybe 40 gallons of dust. And that is all of the dust that is contaminated through. And that is the canister filter. It is 0 0.1 micron, if I'm not mistaken. And those are the flapper panels on top. This area is the future home of my um, blank storage once I get the boxes come in. Hot water tank, and that's my 20 gallon air compressor. A bit overkill, but I was dumb at the time. And this is the only exit to my shop beyond the window. I do have an ulterior door here. If I have to, I can knock that out pretty quick. That was the original door for the wood room. This was where they stored firewood and this concrete pad is where the furnaces were. When we changed over to electric heat and upgraded the service, I thought this space would be best used for a shop and a place to start my business in. If you wanted to help sponsor my videos, check out Patreon. If you wanted to keep in touch with Twitter or Facebook, you can also check out photos of FAMAS on Instagram, visit our website, check out our YouTube recommendations for this week.